All right. So we're going to talk about something called geometric means. These are also right triangle problems because we're in Chapter 7, which is all about right triangles. To find an arithmetic mean between two numbers, you add them together and divide by 2. Okay, that's called the arithmetic mean. The geometric mean, we're going to multiply the two numbers and then square root them. So essentially, this is what you're doing to find the geometric mean between A and B. You're going to cross multiply. So you got AB equals X squared. And then to solve for x, you square root both sides. But we're going to put numbers in there. Okay? So if we want to find the geometric mean between 6 and 9, all of your problems today will be two ratios equal to each other. Okay? The geometric mean, whatever it is, we write twice diagonally. It doesn't matter if you do diagonally with a you know, upper left, lower right, or the other direction. As long as they're diagonal from each other, we're good. Whatever you want to find the ge geometric mean between, for instance, in this example, we're looking at 6 and 9, and it doesn't matter if you put 9 and 6 or 6 and 9, you're going to get the same answer. You put those diagonally, and like I said up above, we're going to cross multiply. So if we multiply x times x, we got x squared. 9 times 6 is 54. Someone with a calculator help me out, because at this point we have to square root. What is it? Okay. Questions on that? All of our problems will be two fractions equal, and you always cross multiply. Okay, the pictures that you see in this section are going to look like this. There's one big right triangle, and then there's two right triangles inside of it. Okay, you'll notice that three of the lines I have highlighted with yellow squares. That is always going to be your first step on all of your problems, is to highlight the three lines that meet together. Okay, so you'll see me do that on the upcoming section, or the examples. Okay, so these are the geometric means. They're the ones we write twice. So I want you to write twice by each of these. So you'll notice up above, in our example with 6 and 9, x we wrote two times. So that's the geometric mean. And it'll make more sense once we have numbers and letters on there. But those ones that we highlight either with dots or with squiggly lines or somehow highlight those three lines. Those are the ones you write two times diagonally. Okay, so let's look at how to set these up. So let's say I put A, B, and C and these numbers on there. Okay. Again, which ones do we write two times? A, B, and C. So there's three different problems we can set up. Okay. One of them is where we write A two times. Another one is where we write, and we'll fill in the numbers in a second, but another one is where we write B two times. And then the last one is where we write C two times. You'll notice I wrote them in the opposite corners on this one because it doesn't matter. As long as your double ones are diagonal from each other, you're going to get the right answer. Okay. Now the question you're asking yourself each time after you write down the geometric mean, the one that you highlight with squiggles or the dotted lines or however you highlight them, you're going to ask yourself, what does it touch as far as the numbers down here? Okay, so looking at A right here, which is right here, what numbers down below is it closest to? 13 is one of them. And 18 is the other one, okay, which is the length of the entire segment down there, okay? We're not going to cross multiply and solve these. We're just learning how to set them up. Okay. Let's look at B. Right here, what numbers do you think we should pick for B? Yes, the middle two, the, the left and the right, so 13 and 5. All right, and then lastly, if we look at side C, what numbers is it closest to? Five. Five and 18. I want to just highlight something right here because this is 
a very common thing. So everyone, if you want to do this on your notes, you can as well. But you'll notice a lot of kids try to put these two together. But are these blue lines even touching each other right here? No. So you're not going to want to put C with 13 and you're not going to want to put A with 5 because they don't touch each other at all. Okay? And you can never put a geometric mean with an, another geometric mean. So don't ever put A with B or C. Now the variable isn't always going to be on those three lines at the top. Sometimes the numbers are up there. So I'll show you some two examples and then we'll start the homework together. Okay, so let's look at this one. What did I say your first step was going to be on each one? Highlight the three lines that meet together at a point. So which ones am I going to highlight? X is one of them. And what one? Okay. Okay, that's first step on every single problem today, is to highlight the geometric means. All right. So how many times do we write those squiggled, highlighted segments? We write them two times. That's the whole reason we highlight them, is those are our double ones that we write down. Okay, so pick a letter. It doesn't matter which one. Okay, if we're going to solve for x first, do we write x two times? Okay. What does X touch? Four and, and it touches 12. Okay, let's actually go through and solve this one. If we cross multiply, we've got 48 equals X squared. We square root that number. Perfect. So you just figured out how long this segment is right here, 6.93. Okay, well let's tackle solving for y. Will we write down y two times? Question or answer? Okay, what two numbers should we use? Yes, we're going to use 4 because it touches 4 right here. And where did he get 16? Yeah, you have to add them together. Okay, so if we cross multiply here, we're going to get y squared equals, what's that? Okay, when we square root on this one, what do we get? Mm -hmm. Questions? It's really the setup that tends to be the most difficult part for kids because once you get it set up, you cross multiply, you guys are good with that part of it. But it's knowing where to put the numbers. So we're going to try one that's a little bit more difficult. So let's look at this one. Which ones do we highlight? Y, 6, and the other one. Okay. So those are the ones you write how many times? Twice. Okay. Now, if we're going to find what Y is, do we write Y two times? I know I keep saying this, but it will help you, I promise. Okay, what is Y touching? Does it touch 9? Where are you getting 3? Can we put squiggles with other squiggles? No. Nope. It touches this right here, doesn't it? So maybe if we found that, you could put any letter there you wanted to, that would help us find this, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's do that one first. Maybe let's switch over to use a different geometric mean. So is there another one that we highlighted? What one? Six? Okay. How many times would you write six? 
two times. Okay, so let's do a little bit of work over here. What does six touch? Touches nine. And six. Okay, so let's cross multiply here. We've got 9x equals 36. What do we do here? Do we square root? No, we don't square root. We divide. All right. So now we can put 4 there. So sometimes you have to add your own variables in so that you can find information that would help you get your answer. Okay, well now we can figure out this part. What does y touch on the triangle now? 4 and the whole thing, which is 13. Okay, well we can solve this now. We cross multiply. What's 4 times 13? 13. We square root it. 7.21. Perfect. Questions. We're going to start the homework together. So if you could get out a piece of paper. So let's look at number six. I will put the picture up here on the board. Okay, so this is what number six looks like. We need to find x. Okay, let's highlight our three lines. Which ones would have squiggles on them? X would. What else? All right, so now that we have them highlighted, do we write x two times? What is x touching? Let's not worry about the assignment and what problems you're doing. Let's just focus up here at number six. You're running into a problem already? The middle one doesn't touch the entire length. The, the two pieces. We don't have either of those pieces, do we? No. Okay, so when we're missing some of something that we need, we're going to put a new variable on there. doesn't matter what letter you pick, okay? So it would really help us if we knew, for instance, A right here. Yes. Okay? So instead of using X as our geometric mean, we could pick a different one that we had highlighted. If we're going to try to find out what A is, which geometric mean should we pick? 26 isn't a geometric mean. 23. Okay, so let's write 23 two times. What does 23 touch? Touches A, which is what we want to find. And the whole thing, the 26.6. Okay, so help me out with the calculator here. How much? Okay, help me out again with this part. Okay, well that would help to put that here, 19.9. Now we know what that other one is. 
How would you find that one? Yeah, the whole thing is 26.6, .6, so we subtract 19.9. Okay. Well, now can we jump back to what we had started doing? Yes. We have the two pieces we need, right? Okay. So we got 19.9, 6.7. We cross multiply. Help me out. Calculator. 127.3. Like this? No. Okay. And then we square root. And we have our answer we want. Okay, we'll round. Questions on this? If you're ever setting something up and you run into something where you don't have enough information, try using a different geometric mean so that you can find that piece of information. <coughs> we good? Thank you.